said, Jose is our next speaker for uh, C2 Taco. Uh, thank you very much for attending to my talk. Today I'm going to present my most recent work, uh, c to taco Lifting Tensor Code to Taco. So, in the last decade we have seen a large increase in the use of machine learning in a wide range of applications that go from our personal devices to even cloud computers, so it's no exaggeration to say machine learning is everywhere. And machine learning is dominated by tensor algebra. So most of the time, machine learning systems are doing some kind of tensor algebra computation. This means we want the tensor algebra to be fast. We want to generate a fast assembly and executable code for computation you are performing the most. And current technology still fails to deliver the performance we want by just using general compilers or, or general purpose language. We, we cannot get to the performance that we want. And this has led to the growth of domain-specific languages, uh, which are languages that embed knowledge about the domain they were designed for, so which makes them to be uh, very efficient. So we can get to the fast assembly that we want. Uh, one example of such language is TACO, which is the Tensor Algebra Compiler, which is both a high-level programming language and a compiler that generates platform-specific code. And the core of TACO is the ISAM notation language. So the programs in TACO are expressed using ISAM summation notation. Uh, this is one example of a program that multiplies a, a matrix for a vector. We can express like that in TACO. Uh, another example is give this piece of code, which is, although it uses a lot of pointer arithmetic manipulation, this is actually matrix multiplication. And we can express the same code in TACO using the a taco index uh, expression notation, which is the green box on top, and we can give that expression to taco compiler that generates both uh, high optimized codes, uh, high optimized C code for CPU and Q the code for uh, GPU platforms. So cool. Uh, given that we have this language, now we can go and write our applications with those languages. Then we have the fast code we want. But what about legacy code? What about existing databases of code that we would like to speed up. How do we jump from the existing language to the domain-specific ones? Uh, this will involve a lot of rewriting code, and like, no need to say that doing this manually is uh, error-prone and time-consuming task. So we would like to do that as automatic as possible. And people have tried to build that dash error over there uh, over the past few decades with different techniques. One example of such techniques is API matching or rewriting. It's when you detect a piece of code that's performing a computation and then you replace that to, to, with a call to some API that it's, it was designed by performing that. The problem with that approach is that it's very brittle and it needs to change a lot every time the API changes itself. And you know that uh, usually those APIs, they change by version very fast. So you need to 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 change your API, your API matching approach. Uh, another technique is using neural machine translation, which is using deep learning models to directly translate from one language to the other. Uh, the problem with that approach and it, and, uh, is that it demands data and demands quality data, which is not exactly wide available, especially when we are talking about domain-specific languages. Uh, another, another technique is called verified lifting where you, you can specify uh, the co a computation using logic formulas, and then using that summary computation, you can translate to your target language. And the problem is that for the domain of tensor algebra, that doesn't apply very well because the problems are just too complicated for the solvers to reason about. And uh, the, form, the logic formula you have to create, to create it becomes uh, too complex and and unfeasible to be expressed. So in this context, we propose C to Taco our lifting tool that will lift tensor code written in C to Taco. And the core of our approach is using enumerative program synthesis from I uh, input output examples. So we use programming by example uh, using iOS or a specification. So using C to Taco, we can go from that C code to Taco, and then you have uh, optimizing versions of the original code. Uh, this is the overall architecture of how our system works. So given the program P, uh, we first need to 
give that program through a program classifier because we take as input general purpose programs and not all the computation in those programs is expressible in TACO. So we need to detect the regions that are actually expressible in TACO. So we use program classifier to extract the region you know, we call K, regions of code that uh, perform some tensor algebra. We use that uh, to generate IO examples that to serve as a specification and give to TACO, to C to TACO, sorry. And Inside our city taco, we will have the synthesis part that we use the IO specification plus some code and some code features that we will extract from the original code to help guide in the synthesis search. And once our synthesizers find an equivalent program in taco, we pick up the program T, we use the taco compiler, lower it down, and then we can replace the computation in the original program. So we use uh, IO generation as previous work. We use just uh, a methodology that uses value profile files where you can define uh, dimensions of arrays and values of variables that you want to generate uh, IO examples. And we use bottom-up enumerative synthesis of templates, which, mean, which means that we are generating programs with template variables and that we need to find valid substitutions for those templates to concrete, via, concrete values from the uh, specification. And our synthesis has an upper bound length, which I should talk about later on how we get this, this upper bound for our synthesis stop. And so it's basically a bottom-up enumerative synthesis. You start with programs with length one, and then you expand the grammar to programs of length two by adding all possibilities of programs and all possibilities of new tensors and constants, as you get to bigger lengths, you also include math, uh, mathematical operators, and so on and so forth. As you go, you just go expanding and, and, and having more programs that you explore. Uh, as you see, in, for example, I just showed the solution, it's there, but there are a lot of programs to be, to be checked. We enumerate all of these programs, and then we check them by looking for substitutions for the template variables we have in the programs to the concrete values we have in the specification. And we either return no equivalent taco program or we, we return no solution phone. And the, the, search of pro, the sp search space of programs we can look at, it's enormous. So just simply enumerating all of them is not feasible. Uh, what we do is that we leverage the fact that we are going from source code to extract features from that source code that will help to guide our synthesis search. Uh, we define three analyses. One to detect the, the length of the program we would like to synthesize. One to detect the order of which tensor in the program. And another one to detect which are the mathematical operators that we will, will they are likely to be in our solution. So taking again the, the example from, from before, the first analysis program length, given a program, we will find the, the relevant statements or relevant computations that we want to express. In this case, we notice that this is the, the relevant computation of this piece of code. So we, we will analyze the references in there. We go back to their definitions and we see that, okay, we have three variables, three tensors that come from the input, so it's likely that our solution will need three tensors. Uh, so this is the, we will come up with the upper bound for our synthesis, our synthesis algorithm from the code analysis. And secondly, we try to guess the order of the tensors in the program. So we do this with a combination of uh, array recovery from pointers and array de delinearization. So for example, given that pointer uh, PC, we apply our, our transformations to get the, that PC is it's actually going over an array by using that affine expression Z times K plus I, which give us uh, PCKI, which means, okay, this tensor is likely to be ordered two. And finally, we, we just simply analyze the 
the computation we are interested at and see which kind of operation operators you have that. In that case, we have a, a multiplication operation. So it basically will give to us in the size of looking for a program that is equivalent to this one uh, that behaves uh, according to uh, according to the specification of this one. But the length is likely to be three. You will have all the tensors will have order two, and they will include multiplication. So we go enumerating programs again, and again we will have more pro more candidates than those, but we will just enumerate programs with length 3 and uh, tensors of order 2 and multiplication. So although we are still enumerating programs, we are in a very restricted space and this leads us to find our solution quicker. Uh, we compared our approach with four different techniques. One of them is the, which you call ETS, with simple enumerative template synthesis, which is basically C to taco without the code analysis help. So it was basically bottom-up in the synthesis. And we also compare against a neural machine translation model where we use the, C comp the TACO compiler to generate a lot of pairs, TACO I, TACO I sum notation and C. And we use that as training data to train and transform a model that was, will give, uh, we output the TACO program given a C program. And we also compare against ChatGPT because it's a Although it's not trained to to output taco, we it's a it's a uh, uh, widely used neural machine translation approach, and we want to compare some of that we didn't train, and we also compare against TF Coder, which is a open source synthesizer that also synthesizes programs from uh, input output examples, uh, and it it, it synthesizes programs in TensorFlow, and we manually check that. Uh, the, the search space of TensorFlow is able to to represent all the programs in TACO, so it's a, a valid comparison. We evaluated on two sets of benchmarks. The first one we call artificial benchmarks. They are handcrafted benchmarks that we know for sure can be synthesized. So we performed this evaluation to see how well those approaches do on programs that we know for sure they're, 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 that there is an answer. We have 10 artificial programs, and we can see from this table that TF Code is able to synthesize four of them, and TEDSPT is five. Uh, our NMT model is able to synthesize, currently synthesize seven out of them. Uh, the simple ETS synthesizes eight, and c 2 is able to correctly synthesize all of them in time. ETS fails for two programs because the search space gets too large, which is the same case for TF Coder. And for ChatGPT and for the NMT model, they just output programs that are, in some cases, for the case of NMT, they are all synthetically valid, but they are semantically wrong. For ChatGPT, you have both cases. You have programs that are synthetically wrong and programs that are semantically, semantically wrong. We also test off with programs taken from real-world applications with a total of 61 programs. We take them from different sources that include, for example, digital signal processing benchmarks, uh, machine learning frameworks, and scientific mathematical libraries. Uh, first, we evaluate the coverage of each approach, see how much of our whole benchmark suite each approach can lift. We have the result for each one of the sets in our suite with the general mean on the right. Uh, we see that NMT was the worst approach and it wasn't able to lift any program in the real world code. And we claim that NMT was trained with taco generated programs and they have a similar structure that does not express the the general structure of programs that we will find in real-world applications. So the NMT model we train is not able to reason about different programs. ChatGPT was able to lift 22% of the programs, and TF Code was able to, to, to correctly synthesize 33% of the programs. ETS, both ETS and C2Taco had high coverage, but ETS still fails on more complex programs where the search space gets, gets too large. And c 2 gets the high coverage, being able to, to correctly, correctly lift 95% of the, the benchmarks in our suite. 
for error analysis, we detect four categories of errors during our evaluation. We have the semantic errors, which are uh, cases where the, the, the technique outputs a program with, which is valid according to the TACO grammar, but it's wrong according to, to, to the specification. This is the case for a few programs in ChatGPT and almost 20 programs that TF code outputs. And this is the case for all the programs NMT fails. So we saw, we conclude the transformer model is able to correctly capture the, the, the structure of the output, so it understands the grammar, but it doesn't understand the, the meaning of the program it's trying to translate. And we also have synthetic fails where the, the, program, the outputted program is wrong, even according to the grammar, and we saw that only ChatGPT produced programs that are synthetic and valid, but again, ChatGPT was not trained specific for this, was trained with billions of parameters, they are completely general. We have the large search space, which affects the, the search-based techniques. Uh, it's the main reason of failure for TF coder, and the, 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 the only uh, failure reason for ETS, and we have the city taco failing on unsupported features, which means our uh, features from taco that uh, we are not able to support, which includes uh, sparse code, and, uh, for example, sparse code, uh, distribution of parentheses, things like that, that uh, we are currently not able to support. And uh, the, the, index, the index, indexing of variables with, uh, the indexing of, ver of variables that represent tensors with high orders, I mean, very, very high orders. Uh, we also want to measure the lifting time of each one of the approaches, and this graph shows the, the lifting time in seconds for which, or how much time it takes for each approach to produce a solution. Uh, we can see that both neural-based approaches, NMT and ChatGPT, they are stable across the whole suite because they don't involve a search, they just directly output programs. And TF Coder, it's surprisingly fast for the programs it can synthesize, it's, sometimes it's faster even than the the neural-based approach, but that speed comes at a cost of coverage as it time out for most of the programs. Uh, or ETS, it's more scalable than TF Coder, but it still takes a lot of time for, for most of benchmarks and times out for a bunch of them. And c 2 it's slower than the, the neural machine-based translation, the neural machine translation-based approach, sorry, but it's it's on average faster than the purest synthesis approach. And this shows that the, using the code features as a guide during search really helps to decrease the search space and leads the algorithm towards the, the, the solution. Uh, the main reason we wanted to lift programs to begin with was performance. So we measured the performance of lifted kernel against the original implementation. So on the left we have the, the, the speed up we get when we compile those programs down to the TACO generated CPU versions and on the right you have the TACO generated GPU version and the baseline is the original implementation compiled with GCC-03. Uh, on the CPU our programs are on average 1.79 faster than the original implementation the high speed of value was 5.33 on the GSP, GSP stone benchmarks, and the lowest speed up was 1.21 on the darknet programs. And on the GPU or programs, we got a speed up of 24.11 times uh, on, on average, and this shows that, yes, we, thanks to the, the, the TAC optimized code knowledge and the uh, generation mechanism, we are able to get faster programs by translating our programs from the, the original shape to a more uh, specific, specific language. So in conclusion, we conclude that lifting is a feasible task for uh, the range of, bench, a range of applications we found, and the, the usage of IO pairs, equivalence behavior, plus code analysis it's efficient in help 
uh, search-based synthesis methods, we are to uh, outperform existing techniques and found uh, uh, and achieve the high coverage of, of 95%. Uh, we show that we can get some speed up by doing lifting on average 1.79 on CPU and 24.11 on the GPU. And for future work, we aim to also target sparse algebra so it can handle more benchmarks and improve even further search by maybe using neuro-guided synthesis by training a network to, to, to help the synthesis, uh, but also using the, the features from, from the programs. So yeah, that's all I had to say for you today. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. So uh, thank you for your talk. Thank you. Um, do you uh, do you know about Poly? The, mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you compared it uh, for the CPU with Poly also? Or is this uh, something you did uh, during your uh, implementation phase or testing phase? No, we didn't compare against Poly because we just compared against the you mean the the you mean the speed up of programs. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we just compared against the the original implementation because we wanted to show that uh, if you have the original implementation we can get to the to fast programs by just doing this this translation but mm. so but no we we didn't compare uh, against poly okay so if i said it correctly it's not to optimize in the low level sense but to optimize in this this high level c sense to to generate better code and not generate better byte code yeah so mm. Uh, we are not, let's say, we are not, the speed up we get is not, is not made by our synthesis, like our synthesis doesn't make programs fast, but our synthesis makes, uh, our synthesis makes possible to port that programs to platforms that will make them faster. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the guarantees. Uh, so uh, is there any kind of uh, proof that the, the generated uh, tensor algebra expression is correct? So well, we don't formally guarantee that the program is correct. So like we assure that they're correct under the, the, the IO specifications we generated. There is ongoing work on that because we've tried to use uh, some kind of form verification on the programs, uh, more specifically uh, model checking, but we found out that for the programs we have, that didn't scale. So like uh, for the simple programs, it worked, but well, for the most complex program, it timed out with like uh, more than one hour of running time. So we found that that's not feasible to insert in a loop where you're testing a lot of candidates. But yes, it's something that we wish to, 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 to add to our pipeline. So th there was one slide where you were kind of showing the design space, like verified lifting and the other approaches. I think it was one of the initial slides. I wanted to understand better the trade-offs yeah, between each of these approaches because as far as I understand, verified lifting actually ensures the correctness. Yeah, it does. Verified lifting, uh, uh, the, the programs that are translated by verified lifting, they are translated from a summer that's proven correct. However, using verified lifting, uh, we were not able to express tensor algebra in the formulation. So like the, the kind of computation we are doing, it's... Uh, I think it's too complex for the symbolic reason they use. So we tried to use the, the framework, but we, we found that the language was not expressible enough to, to capture the semantics of the tensor algebra programs. Thanks. Thank you. I think he has a question. No, no, no. I thought you had. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think I did a chance. 
So I was curious, I guess, the, the synthesis you do, can you explain again how you sort of ensure that it's, it matches the, that the code you generate matches the C code? Yeah, so the same semantics? Yeah, we, we are checking this by behavior equivalency, which is basically given our candidates they are well formed, we will run them in the I.O. examples that were generated using the original code. So we generate I.O. examples with the original code, and then we run the candidates to see if they match. And how do you sort of ensure you get enough coverage that you generate enough examples to... No, so like we currently just generated like a lot of examples and run it, <coughs> and we, as again, we don't ensure any, we don't provide any kind of formal guarantee. Mm -hmm. We just uh, use that I.O. examples, but from our experience, uh, it's not something I can't prove, but for linear algebra examples, usually they, they at least for an R synthesis, the candidates, they either fail in all examples or, the, or they pass in all of them. So I think for the nature of linear algebra, uh, of the, the linear algebra we are dealing with, it's, uh, I think it, uh, as you add more examples, you still have reached the same conclusion, so I think you don't need like millions of examples to prove that. But uh, but yes, I mean our coverage is just based based on number of IO samples. Yeah, you feel you have enough. Yeah. As a follow-up to that, so you mentioned that one of your features of your concept is sparse tensor algebra. Yeah. I think over there the problem is going to become more interesting because for dense tensor algebra. You don't have complicated control flows. Yeah. But for sparse tensor algebra, you could have all these weird kind of things happening. Yeah. The yeah. The we have a challenge with sparse algebra is because when you're using Taco and you need to check the program, like write your program Taco, the dimensions of tensors they need to be uh, uh, they need to be explicit. So uh, you need to give concrete numbers. And let's say if you need to instantiate a tensor, if it's sparse, you also need to give the coordinates. And we found hard to extract those coordinates from the original code. So like uh, working on, on sparse algebra also involves some work on that front. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely more challenging. All right, well, let's thank our speaker again. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.